90% of what we worry about never actually comes to pass. Yet, here we are, spending days, months, or even years entangled in the web of our own worries, letting precious moments slip by. It's almost as if our minds are tuned to a station that plays a constant loop of the worst hits from our past and future. But what if I told you that some of the wisest people who ever lived had figured out a way to change the station? Today, we're diving deep into the world of Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that offers a robust toolkit for detangling ourselves from these webs and reclaiming the joy of living in the present. Stoics like Marcus Aurelius and Seneca weren't just philosophers, they were practical thinkers who lived lives full of responsibilities and challenges, much like you and I. They taught that while we can't control every circumstance, we can control our responses, and in those responses lies our power and our peace. This video isn't just about ancient texts, it's about transforming their wisdom into actionable strategies that can lead to a more serene and focused life. So, if you're ready to stop the endless cycle of what-ifs and start living with intention and tranquility, stay tuned as we explore how to apply stoic principles to modern-day worries and turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. If you appreciate the insights we're diving into today, a simple free favor I'll ask from you is to hit the subscribe button and stick with us throughout, because every part of this video is designed to bring you closer to a more peaceful, purposeful life. Let's get started. Banish your worries by living firmly in the moment. The Stoics were big advocates for focusing on the present. They believed that the past is out of our control, the future is uncertain, and only the present is real and manageable. When you think about it, worry often traps us in a cycle of regret about the past or anxiety about the future, right? It's like we're either replaying old movies that can't be changed or trying to predict the next season of a show that hasn't even been written. But here's a powerful stoic practice for you. Imagine dividing your day into tiny compartments or moments where each one is lived as fully as possible. It's about saying... Right now, this is where I am, and it's all I need to focus on. This isn't just about mindfulness or meditation. It's about making a conscious decision to not let your thoughts drift into territories where they have no practical use. Think about how freeing that is. When you're truly present, you're not just waiting for the next big thing or mourning a lost opportunity. You're actively engaging with life as it happens. This doesn't mean you don't plan for the future, but you plan as a part of the present moment's actions, not as a worry fueled marathon. So, how can we practice this? Start by really tuning in to whatever you're doing. If you're eating, savor each bite. If you're walking, feel each step. Notice your surroundings, the sounds, the air. It sounds simple but it's incredibly powerful. This act of being present calms the mind and reduces the noise of worry, because worry struggles to live in a mind fully engaged with the now. The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once noted that we could rid ourselves of many illusions if we fully embraced the present. We often let our thoughts run away with assumptions, fears, and what-ifs. But when we anchor ourselves in the now, those illusions start to lose their power, and so does worry. A three-step guide to waving worries away. Let's break down a practical three-step guide to managing worry, drawing inspiration from both modern psychology and timeless stoic wisdom. This isn't just about suppressing your feelings, but about dealing with them in a constructive and rational way. The first step is all about clarity. You need to pinpoint exactly what's on your mind. Is it a project at work, a personal relationship, financial worries? Sometimes just the act of naming your worry can diminish its power over you. 
The Stoics would encourage us to describe our fears as precisely as possible because, in the words of Seneca, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. So by defining what worries you, you're already beginning to take its power away. This step might sound a bit pessimistic at first, but it's actually about empowerment. Ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen? Really explore that scenario. This is a technique Stoicism teaches called premeditatio malorum, or the premeditation of evils. The idea is that by visualizing the worst-case scenario, you're preparing yourself mentally for any outcome, which reduces anxiety about the unknown. More often than not, you'll realize that even the worst outcome is something you can handle. This doesn't just reduce worry. It boosts your confidence. Now that you've considered the worst, it's time to think about how you can improve that outcome. This is where creative thinking comes in. Can you take steps now to prevent that worst-case scenario from happening? Or if it does happen, how can you handle it in a way that minimizes its impact? This step is about moving from passive to active. Instead of being a victim of circumstances, you're becoming the architect of your solutions. The Stoics believed strongly in focusing on what we can control and letting go of what we can't. This step embodies that philosophy by encouraging proactive engagement with life's challenges. By following these three steps, you tackle worry head-on. Instead of letting it control you, you're taking control of it. You identify the problem, you face it with the courage to acknowledge the worst aspect of it, and then you use your reason and creativity to mitigate it. This approach doesn't just wave worries away. It transforms them into a plan of action, a strategy that the Stoics would approve of because it emphasizes rational thinking and personal agency. Remember, the goal here isn't to never feel worried. That's impossible. The goal is to manage worry so effectively that it no longer holds you back from living your best life. By applying these three steps, you turn worries from daunting shadows into manageable challenges that you're equipped to overcome. Face your worries and analyze them for clarity of mind. Worries are often vague, shadowy figures in the back of our minds, causing stress without us even fully understanding why. To diminish their power, we need to bring them into the light and take a good, hard look. The Stoics had a great approach to this. They encouraged rigorous self-examination and reflection. Marcus Aurelius, for instance, often wrote about confronting his thoughts directly to understand their nature and origins. This method isn't just about knowing what you're worried about, but understanding why it worries you. Is it because it threatens something you value? Is it because it strikes at a vulnerability or a past trauma? Here's how you can start this process. Begin by writing down your worries. Just the act of writing can help clarify thoughts that were murky when just floating around in your head. Once you have them on paper, it's easier to be objective about them. Next, ask yourself some probing questions. Why does this worry me? What is the worst that could happen, and how likely is that to occur? What might be the root cause of this fear? Often, you'll find that the root of a worry isn't what you first thought. It might be something deeper or more fundamental. This step is about peeling back the layers of your anxiety to reveal its core. Then, consider the influence of these worries. Are they affecting your behavior? Are they holding you back from opportunities or happiness? This understanding can be incredibly powerful because it shifts your perspective. It moves you from feeling worried to understanding why you feel that way, which is the first step in gaining control over the emotion. The final step in the Stoic approach is about rationalization and response. Once you understand your worry, you can more easily find logical, practical ways to address it. This might mean changing something in your life, rethinking a belief, 
or maybe just accepting that some aspects of the situation are out of your control. By analyzing your worries like this, you're not just reducing their immediate impact, you're also training your mind to handle future worries more effectively. It's like mental conditioning. Over time, you become better at recognizing the triggers and patterns of your anxiety, and each analysis becomes faster and more efficient. Keeping busy will distract your mind away from your everyday worries. This isn't about mindlessly filling every second of your day to avoid your thoughts, but rather engaging in meaningful activities that command your full attention and thus naturally push out excessive worrying. The Stoics were big on the idea of using your time wisely. They saw time as a precious resource that shouldn't be wasted on unnecessary concerns. Seneca, one of the most famous Stoic philosophers, wrote extensively about the importance of being selective with our activities to ensure they are meaningful and not just ways to pass time. When you engage in tasks that are fulfilling and align with your values, you leave little room for worries to take root. So, how does staying busy help with worry? Well, when you're focused on a task, whether it's work, a hobby, or even a good conversation, your mind engages in what psychologists call flow. It's that state where you're so absorbed in what you're doing that you lose track of time. In this state, there's no mental bandwidth left to fret about the past or future. You're fully immersed in the present. This can look like diving into work that challenges and interests you, picking up hobbies that require your full attention, physical activity, which is not only good for your body, but also for your mind, and social interactions that are rich and engaging, spending time with friends or family, particularly in activities that keep you all engaged, can also serve as a strong distraction from worry. Remember, the Stoic ideal isn't about being busy just for the sake of it. It's about choosing activities that are meaningful and contribute to your personal growth and well-being. They believed that virtue and well-being are closely linked to how we use our time. The ultimate question, what are the chances? This question invites us to evaluate the likelihood of the worries we conjure up in our minds actually coming to pass. It's a straightforward technique, but its simplicity is what makes it so effective. The Stoics believed in facing reality with rationality and clear judgment. When we ask ourselves, what are the chances? We're tapping into this Stoic practice of objective evaluation. This question helps to ground our fears in reality rather than letting them float in a sea of irrational possibilities. Think about it this way. How often have you worried about something only to find that the outcome was nowhere near as bad as you imagined? Our minds are experts at creating scenarios far worse than reality. By stopping to quantify the odds, we force our minds to consider actual data and logic, which can significantly reduce the intensity of our worries. Here's how you might apply this. Consider historical data or past experiences. If you're worried about failing an exam, ask yourself how many exams you've actually failed, despite similar worries. Evaluate the statistical likelihood. For example, if you're scared of a plane crash, looking at the actual statistics can be reassuring. Rationally analyze the situation. Break down what would need to happen for your worry to become reality and see how probable each step is. This method not only reduces the feeling of anxiety, but also brings clarity to your decision-making process. It allows you to separate what's possible from what's likely, and often you'll find that most of what we fear is far less likely than we think. Changing your attitude will help you to move toward happiness. The Stoics believed that it's not events themselves that disturb us, but our judgments about them. By changing our attitudes, we can change our emotional responses. Here's how you can start to change your attitude. Choose to see the good. This isn't about ignoring the negatives, but about balancing your perspective. 
For every negative thought, challenge yourself to find a positive. If you're worried about a big presentation at work, instead of thinking about what could go wrong, focus on the opportunities it presents for growth and recognition. Embrace the idea of amor fati. This is a Latin phrase used by the Stoics that translates to love of fate or love of one's fate. It means embracing everything that happens to you, good or bad, as necessary. This doesn't mean being passive. It's about actively saying yes to life, to learning from each experience. Practice gratitude. It's easy to focus on what's going wrong or what we lack. By consciously shifting our focus to what we have and what's going well, we cultivate a more positive and resilient mindset. Start or end your day by listing three things you're grateful for. This simple practice can significantly impact your overall outlook. Changing your attitude isn't about denying your emotions or pretending that everything is fine when it's not. It's about choosing to respond to life's challenges with a mindset that emphasizes growth, resilience, and positivity. This doesn't just help with managing worries. It creates a foundation for a happier and more fulfilling life. Is criticism a backhanded compliment? Criticism is something that everyone experiences, and it can either be a tool for growth or a source of great discomfort. But here's an interesting twist on it, seen through the lens of Stoicism. What if we viewed criticism as a backhanded compliment? This perspective can shift the entire experience from one of defensiveness to one of opportunity. The Stoics teach us a lot about perception and the power it holds over our emotional responses. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, famously said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This is especially true when it comes to handling criticism. Instead of immediately seeing it as a negative judgment or an attack, what if you could see it as a sign that you're doing something significant enough to warrant notice? Here's how you can start to shift your perspective on criticism. First, consider the source. Is the criticism coming from someone you respect and admire? If so, it might be worth considering seriously. If it's coming from someone who consistently undermines others, it's likely more about them than you. Look for the kernel of truth. Even in the most seemingly unfair criticism, there's often something you can learn. It requires humility and a bit of detachment to sift through hurtful words to find a lesson, but doing so can be incredibly growth-oriented. Reflect on the intent. Was the criticism meant to be constructive? If so, embracing it can lead to significant improvements. If it was intended to hurt, it's a reflection of the critic's own issues, not yours. By reinterpreting criticism in this way, not only do you reduce its sting, but you also transform it into something that can enhance your personal and professional growth. This stoic approach isn't about suppressing your feelings or ignoring valid feedback. Rather, it's about developing a thicker skin and a clearer vision of what you want to achieve. It's about using every piece of feedback as a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block. Banishing mental and emotional fatigue will help you build a brighter future. Let's talk about something that impacts all of us at one point or another. It's that feeling of being drained, not from physical exertion, but from the constant stress, worries, and the emotional roller coasters of daily life. Addressing this fatigue is crucial not just for our well-being today, but for building a brighter, more sustainable future for ourselves. The Stoics understood the importance of maintaining a balance between action and reflection, advocating for a lifestyle that nurtures both the mind and the spirit. They taught that our energies are finite, and that how we choose to spend our mental and emotional reserves directly impacts our quality of life. Marcus Aurelius, in his Meditations, emphasizes the importance of conserving our inner resources, advising us to engage only in activities that are essential 
and aligned with our values. So, how do we start to banish this kind of fatigue and replenish our internal reserves? Prioritize and simplify your life. Look at your commitments and responsibilities. Are there tasks or activities that don't truly align with your values or bring you joy? Perhaps it's time to say no or delegate those tasks. Simplifying isn't about doing less for the sake of less. It's about making more room for activities that are genuinely fulfilling. Practice presence and mindfulness. Much of our mental and emotional fatigue comes from dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. By focusing on the present moment, truly engaging with it, we can serve energy that would otherwise be spent on unproductive worry. Set boundaries. This is critical for maintaining mental health. Define clear limits with others regarding your time and energy. This isn't selfish. It's necessary for self-preservation. Boundaries help protect you from being overextended and allow you to allocate your energy more wisely. Regular self-reflection. Take time to examine your thoughts and emotions. What's causing you stress? Are there patterns or triggers that you can identify and address? Stoicism doesn't just advocate awareness, but also proactive management of one's inner life. Incorporating these practices helps to reduce the load on your mental and emotional faculties, like giving your body a break after a long day of physical labor. Giving your mind a rest is not just beneficial, it's essential. It allows you to recover from the stresses of daily life and recharge your batteries. Get regular sleep. We tend to think of sleep as just a way to recharge physically, but it's so much more than that. It's a fundamental pillar for both our physical and mental health, a true necessity for maintaining balance and wellness in our lives. The Stoics, always practical about the needs of the body and mind, emphasized living in harmony with nature, and that includes following the natural cycles of waking and sleeping. Seneca, for example, spoke about the rejuvenating power of sleep, seeing it as a daily respite for the soul, a time when we can lay down our burdens and allow ourselves to heal from the day's toils. Without adequate sleep, our bodies can't repair muscles, consolidate immune function, or regulate hormones properly. This isn't just about feeling rested. It's about giving your body the time it needs to perform essential maintenance and repair. Sleep plays a massive role in how we think, learn, and remember. During sleep, our brains process the information we've absorbed during the day, make connections, and consolidate memories. A well-rested mind is more efficient, creative, and capable of problem-solving. Sleep significantly impacts our mood and emotional resilience. Lack of sleep can make us irritable, prone to stress, and less emotionally stable. Regular sleep helps to moderate our reactions and maintain a more stoic composure in the face of daily challenges. To improve your sleep, consider these tips. Establish a regular sleep schedule. Go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. Consistency reinforces your body's sleep-wake cycle. Create a restful environment. This means cool, quiet, and comfortable. Make your bedroom a sanctuary for sleep. Limit exposure to screens before bed. The blue light emitted by phones, tablets, and computers can interfere with your ability to fall asleep. Wind down before bed. Develop a bedtime routine that signals to your body it's time to sleep. This could include reading, gentle stretching, or meditation. Remember, like any stoic practice, improving your sleep is about making deliberate choices. It's about recognizing the critical role sleep plays in our overall well-being and making it a priority in your daily routine. By ensuring you get enough quality sleep, you're not just improving your health, you're setting yourself up for a more productive, enjoyable, and balanced life. Masterwork and money worries with a simple, 
direct approach. These are some of the most common sources of stress for many of us, and they can really weigh heavily on our minds. But here's the thing. By adopting a simple, direct approach inspired by Stoic principles, we can manage these worries more effectively and find greater peace of mind. Focus on your actions, not the outcomes. Work, concentrate on doing your best every day. Put in the effort, continue to learn and grow, and let the results take care of themselves. This can relieve the pressure of feeling like everything is riding on a specific outcome or goal. Create a budget and stick to it. Financial worries often stem from feeling out of control. By setting up a budget, you're taking control back. You know exactly where your money is going, which can significantly reduce anxiety. This isn't just about cutting expenses, it's about making informed decisions that align with your financial goals and values. Build an emergency fund. This is Stoicism 101. Prepare for the unexpected. Having a financial buffer can provide peace of mind and reduce worry, knowing you're prepared for life's inevitable surprises. Reflect on your definition of success. Stoicism teaches us to find contentment in our actions and virtues rather than external rewards. Similarly, redefining success in your career might mean focusing more on your professional growth and satisfaction rather than just promotions or salary increases. Adopting a stoic mindset towards work and money involves seeing these aspects of life not as sources of stress, but as opportunities to practice virtues like discipline, wisdom, and courage. It means understanding that while we can guide our professional and financial ships with careful planning and diligent effort, the seas themselves are not under our control. Thank you for joining me today on this journey through managing our worries with a touch of stoic wisdom. Remember, the power to change your life lies not in the events that happen to you, but in your reactions to them. Embrace each day with courage, focus on what truly matters, and let your actions speak to the values you hold dear. If you found this discussion helpful and want to dive deeper into living a more balanced and fulfilling life, check out the suggested videos on your screen. Until next time, stay strong, stay wise, and keep finding joy in the journey.